Do you want to print your own 3D printed robot? Full size humanoid one like this one and in move? Then keep watching. So I started building my InMove robot just there behind me uh, about two years ago I first got my 3D printer and uh, I couldn't wait to sort of build my own robot so that's one of the very first things I did was seek out a robot that would um, meet my criteria of being awesome. <laughs> so InMove is the project um, that I discovered, it's by a French designer Gail Lang Langvin, I think it's pronounced and um, he has a website called InMove.fr for France and um, on there you can download all the different parts of the, the robot. So to back up a moment and tell you a bit more about it, so Gail is a sculptor by trade and um, he got into designing, based on his own appearance, um, a robot. And the thing that he did that was, uh, he did two things that were sort of unusual. He open sourced his work first of all and the second thing he did is he sliced up the robot parts into something that could be printed on a standard size 3D printer. And that means that anyone who found this project could suddenly start replicating what he's done so uh, this was an awesome idea and this is what got me into you know like I said the first thing I printed after printing out some test things on my 3d printer was parts of this robot so I printed the face first uh, the, the sort of mouth section the eyes the head uh, then the neck and then the torso you can see there I've got uh, mostly in white and then some of the sections inside are in black and then I started printing out some of the um, the other appendages so I can just see over here we've got uh, this has just been printed out um, last night it's about 20 24 hour print I think you ought to say um, this here is the arm section and this is his bicep and his bicep connects onto here when it's fully set up and what I need to do next is uh, all these different cables here um, each one of these is connected to a finger you can see there as I'm tweaking these some of these are sort of twitching the fingers so we wrap these around these little servos and uh, then we can control it. Some of the challenges with InMove is it's quite expensive. So these, these servos are not cheap. Some of the servos have to be very strong, so they're metal geared, they're physically quite large size uh, servos, and they can be upwards of 40 pounds, and you need a lot of them. And then within the hand itself, um, the, them servos that you can see there, in the overhead shot, there's five of them. And they're quite, quite large sized servos. They're MG, 995s and 996s. The next challenge is that the software that uh, Gail used to drive the robot is called My Robot Lab. Uh, now I, I started to try and learn this. It's a Java based software with some extensions into Python and it feels a bit of a mishmash of software. I might not be using it correctly but I found it really difficult to get started with that. So that was one of the things that put me off. My programming skill wasn't at a sufficient level, certainly not with uh, using Java or Python at the time, uh, to be able to roll my own um, robot software. So that was one of the, the roadblocks for me. And my robot lab software for me wasn't great. Um, it may have improved, I've not looked at it for two years, so it might be a lot better now. The other challenge is that it takes a very long time to print. Like I said, some of these parts, the hand for example, this took over 24 hours to print. Um, in, in several different pieces. Um, it's not all wired together yet, which is why it's sort of falling apart. But you can see there, um, these are not insubstantial parts to print. And if you're going to print a full size person robot, that's a lot of filament, that's a lot of time to print. Uh, you can change the quality to address some of this so that it doesn't have to be in ultra fine super resolution. It can be in uh, quite a standard or low resolution because there's some of the parts quite big and don't need to be that level of perfection. You do need a quite. You do need to be quite good at 3D printing. You also need to be very good at mechanics, um, mechanical engineering to a degree, because you're going to be making something that's moving around, and there's lots of physical things that you need to think about there. The instructions that 
that come with it that are on the InMove website um, are aimed at people who are quite proficient at modelling and building things themselves and figuring out things that uh, uh, you wouldn't expect if you were sort of a STEM student. So um, it's quite an advanced project, medium to advanced I would say. Um, but don't let that put you off, there are some quite nice easy projects to begin with within Move. One of them is a, is a hand project where you simply just print out one finger and then you can print out the entire hand uh, and get that working with some software and they've made that a gentle introduction. Um, but, yeah, but don't be um, under any illusion, this thing takes quite a, a long time to print and requires quite a bit of skill. So I love it. I'm going to continue building my InMove uh, and this is probably one of the first videos I'll do showing uh, where I'm up to. So here we are. This is the InMove.fr website and you can see there on screen we've got um, a couple of links. We have uh, Build Yours, um, we have Blog, we have Community, Forum, a Gallery and a Shop where you can buy some of the parts from. So one of the parts that I bought, um, let me grab hold of it just here behind me, is is these which are little components um, which allow you to plug all the servos into a central kind of nervous system. Um, some of the, the, the lengths, um, if you think that the servo cables need to go straight back to the, the sort of lower back where all the, the gubbins are, where the battery and uh, the two Arduinos are, that's quite a long length. It's a lot longer than you would have for a regular servo cable. So if I just jump over to overhead here, you can see um, this is not quite in place yet, but there is one of these servo boards here in place. So there it is, it just says in move on it. And there's a little connector there that you can get a ribbon cable to connect to. And each one of these servos is fastened into that connector there. So if I just hold this up a bit closer, you can see um, there it is. Other things we have on the website is uh, build your yours index. So you can see here all the different parts. So the finger starter is the one I mentioned earlier where you've got a very simple project to begin with. I'll just load this one up so you can see what that looks like. And just over here you can see it's a single finger with a single servo and a little holder. And there's all kinds of instructions on how to do that with a sketch for the Arduino as well. Uh, there's a YouTube video as well. Um, links to everything on there. We've got things like the Nervo board. The Nervo board is that board I've just shown you, which is uh, this one. So that's a, a Nervo board. And this comes as a, a PCB that's been split into several different parts. Each one of them has a name, so there's like neck, arm, stomach, eye, mouth, hand, etc. And what you need to do is put into there the different components that come with it. So there's there's some headers and there's some pins. There is also the My Robot Lab, which is the software that I originally had some problems with, and I will take another look at that to see how that's come along. Uh, like I said, it's Java based, um, so you'll need to make sure you've got Java installed on your machine, and it works on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Other useful information on the page is the hardware map, the build of materials. So you can see on there all the different servos that are required and different parts and what pin numbers they correspond to and what kind of maximum degree they, they move to. And then here's all the different diagrams that relate to that. There's the Arduino Mega. And you need quite a considerable battery to power this as well. So I'll get the battery and show you on the overhead what that looks like. So you can see here this battery is uh, quite a heavy duty battery. It's a 6 volt 12 amp battery. Very heavy duty, made of lead so it's physically very heavy as well. And that fits into the back section of the robot. That's enough to drive all the servos inside in move. We've also got all the different types of screw that you'll need. So there's some machine screws, the ones with M in front of them are machine screws and they come in standard sizes and lengths. So the 3, 4 and 8 is the diameter I think and the 20 and 100 is the length of the screw. And then there is also some wood screws which are useful for sort of drilling into the plastic and giving um, some structural strength. You can also put speakers inside in Move, so there's some electronics for that. And one of the other interesting parts that you can fit into an in Move is a Kinect sensor, the um, Xbox Kinect from the 360 console. 
and that enables InMove. You can just see it just off the screen here. This enables InMove to detect things in three dimensions in front of him. Um, so that's a very clever and uh, innovative way of making the robot come to life. So as you can see, there's quite a lot to InMove. It's a great project to get started on. Um, lots of people start these and then don't finish them. So I don't want to be one of these people. I've started continuing with my robot and resurrecting Sonny. Sonny's the name of my robot, named after the robot in iRobot. So if you like this video, make sure you click the like button, subscribe and hit the little bell as well. And you'll get notified next time I put a video out there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. One, two.